privilege to uh, introduce our panel for this evening. And um, as Claire said, what we're going to do first of all is just go and grow. I'm just going to invite each member of the panel to just talk a little bit about how they view success and the redefinitions of success. So my name is Michaela and I work at the Ministry of Education. Um, when I think about success, the first thing I thought about was you can't really define success. One size does not fit all. Each family, each culture have a different value of what success is. The Ministry of Education have tools that schools could use to help them to work with their communities or their, um, their whanau to help them to define what success means for them. Tools such as um, the Pacific Education Plan, Kahakatea Ka Paitia, um, Success for All, and the Inclusive um, Education. Um, I am obviously a principal, I've shared with you before, I've been in education for a really long time now, I have to say how long. Um, but I have thought about the idea of redefining success both deeply and lightly before and since being invited onto this panel. Um, my thinking is related really to my personal experience as a human and to my professional experience as a teacher and reader. In the end, there were three images or scenarios that came to mind in redefining success. One is related to my teaching practice. When a number of years ago, I moved jobs. I had been teaching um, streamed, high ability, predominantly European students in an intermediate school. These children were expected to succeed, and as 11 year olds, they had, in many of the traditional measures, they'd made it already. What this did for me as a teacher was it meant I had high expectations of them. I expected them to think, to question, to communicate, to inquire, to create to understand their ability to learn. When I moved jobs, I began teaching unstreamed year five and sixes. And my approach did not change. My expectations were the same. And surprisingly, well, surprisingly to a lot of other people, these learners also could meet those expectations. So I'm an East Coaster, married to a Naitahu um, beautiful man with four gorgeous Naitahu kids uh, and my husband's heart was calling him home in 2005 and that's when we moved down to this very predominantly white um, Ōtautahi area and it was culture shock for me. I'd been living in Rusarua. Um, I grew up, grew up up in Gisborne in a small uh, east coast settlement with 49 permanent residents called Waiho Bay. Have you watched Boy? That place. <laughs> uh, so I was in culture shock and came down here um, as an educator in uh, Tuahiwi School, was my uh, first role down here. And in my role with Mātauraka Mananui, who I'm forever grateful for trusting me as a non-tahu to be able to put aside my East Coastness and fly the, uh, the Naitahu flag for them in these education spaces. Um, so yeah, I'm also, I'm also from the North Island um, and I uh, feel really lucky that we end up down here in Otetahi um, because of people that we've all heard from tonight because um, I've learnt a uh, huge amount. Um, and with, in terms of success, uh, when I first started teaching, um, I, I quite enjoyed the challenge of taking NCA and, and crafting something that's out of the standards to deliver something quite creative. And then as time went past, I kind of realised that those those were just really restrictive and would actually hold you back and put you through a whole lot of unnecessary admin um, to create content that was already in your brain. Um, so a lot of unnecessary work to slow you down, if anything. Um, and uh, yeah, and then also with the young people, I find that Secondary school completely is just setting up for NCA or delivering NCA. Even I know, um, call Chantal to call on her. Um, 
he kai pa ka hari a kama i kitu fai i ko ho 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 ki with secrets and what. Um, Chantal, you've already met me, <laughs> um, and I'm the centre manager of the play on board. Um, when I thought about this question, I didn't actually want to answer it in the way that anyone else has. Um, I really wanted to focus on, particularly in, in our context and the things that we've been working on, um, around how our kaiako are creating success for tamariki and um, the biggest the biggest aspect and the thing that I've spoken about in my kōrero tonight is around um, an individualised approach about understanding the child and the whānau and working with them um, to, to understand what their definition of success is for one and then also to help them get there and so um, for, for me, I reflected on uh, my kaiko, I reflected on the, the mahi that we've been doing and um, how that's created outcomes for tamariki. And I think um, for me, that's that's the way forward. That's the way that we're going to have children leaving our setting, um, feeling confident, feeling competent, feeling like they're succeeding. And that's exactly what we want. So, so historically, we've measured success with numbers and quantitative data, measuring students' achievement against a relatively arbitrary set standard, um, and it leaves a lot of students behind, or it fails to account for the diversity and the breadth of experience that is in our kura. Um, while that set standard has its place, I see students experience success as themselves, not against that set standard. I see students setting their own standards for success and setting their own goals and being able to articulate not only what that looks like for them, but the journey that it took to get there, as well as the setbacks and challenges involved in that. I see educators recognising the whole student, including father and community, and honouring the less tangible outcomes through learning conversations and reflection. Students who can reflect and learn from their personal learning experiences are far more equipped and resilient to deal with setbacks both long and short term and are also able to manifest their own success outside of schooling. Success for us as educators is having students actually feel success, not us telling them whether or not they are successful. Ko te ahure o te tamaiti, arahia o tato mahi. One of the things that I'd like to add to what's been said is as teachers, do you ask your whānau what they want for their child? Do you ask the child what they want to learn uh, and how they'd like to do that? Uh, because I often hear about parent-teacher interviews and it's very much about the teacher telling the parent what's going on, but it needs to be a two-way conversation, preferably a one-way from whānau to the teacher in order for you to actually genuinely honour what that child brings to their school in the first place and what lights their fire. Because, you know, if you were to take that potential approach on every student that they have unlimited potential and if you want to learn about trucks, we're going to make that happen, buddy, um, then you're going to have more engaged students and better success. Mm. Colin, do you want to have a go at that? Uh, yeah, I think um, it's got to come from school leadership as well, um, and maybe uh, ministry leadership as well. Um, I think teachers are crazy busy. I'm not actually in a teaching teaching role at the moment, but like it's just so hectic when you are. And um, if you are spending all your time writing reports to parents instead of talking to them, um, like yeah, you don't have time for both. So like, what is the what does your school prioritise? You yeah, I, uh, I've just I've just been a part of the um, subject group for NCA review, and um, I'm not a part of it anymore. So I think uh, it depends who's doing it is is going to be the major part of how if it's good or bad. <laughs> and I think it depends on how it is interpreted by teachers and the pressure that's put on around their responsibility to deliver. Um, the less you have to be, kind of not the right word, but I'm gonna use that word, um, the freer you will be to meet the children's needs, I think. Mm. I've got a <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, for for us in the EC sector, it's um, it's a little bit different. But I think the thing that really excites me about um, the curriculum is um, that learning 
happening for children at an early age and for kaiako who have some of them have been in the sector for a long time and maybe haven't had a lot of that knowledge and that information and i think that was something that we recognised in our in our mahi um, around needing to build an understanding of that and Di's been talking about this as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> understanding um, understanding our histories um, to to build our practice. So that is really exciting for, for me. Really cool. I think that jumped into my head almost the NELPs and the, the first one, learner at the centre. Mm-hmm. And if we constantly refer to that, I mean anyone that's been Working with Goa Taha for the last five years, know that's what uh, we're all about. Learner at the centre of change, and if we bring that learner at the centre, I and mean, then what is success for that learner, for their family, and start from there, then it can only end up being a good thing. I think. Mm-hmm. Unpopular opinion. Um, in looking at the new change package for NCA, I was like, oh no, I could have done so much more with what we've got with NCA now. I could have done it. It could be flexible. It could have, and it's all could have, would have, should have. And I think that feeling I want to hold on to with the new package and make sure that as we move into that, it's it's used and, and looked at with a really fresh perspective so that we're able to use it in a really positive way and let it serve the students and not serve our our benchmark, our, mm. um, our box ticking. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Kia ora, Chloe. Well, we might move on to the, the final question just to see if we can honour our finish time. So the question, finish on a, on a positive note here. Um, we've been talking about success in education for many years with, with seemingly different iterations of the same negative statistics. So what gives you hope for the future? <laughs> Come on, we've got a hope. Come on. <laughs> it's a good thing. What gives me hope, uh, and this is a narrow perspective because I get to work with the Coalition of the Willing. I get to work with teachers who want to do more, who want to do better. So immediately we're, it's a positive framework. Um, we haven't, they haven't been forced to go along to something that, that they're making contact saying, please help. What I see there is a willingness to do more, a willingness to do better, a willingness to engage, a lack of confidence in some situations to do that, uh, and a keen desire to not get it wrong, which can result in a default to, oh, I won't do anything because I don't want to offend, and we're there to hold your hand and to support you to be confident to get started. Um, my mantra, and someone, I think it might have been Chantel, uh, quoted it back at me after about four <laughs> weeks of EC workshops. Oh, you said, well, as Bardi says, do more. <laughs> um, and that's said with love, because we take you on a journey, but don't stop there, do more. You know, what? when it's Maya Angelou, do what you can until you know better. And when you know better, do better. Um, so I feel really... Um, privilege to be in the situation to help people who want to be helped, to help people on their journey to understand about this place and the cultural storying that's on the land that you're in, that's in this building, that's all around us. Yes, me. Um, what gives me hope? The learners give me hope uh, on a daily basis. Um, and if we can help them understand their success beyond the data, and I believe that we can. In my school, I've got 500 children. That's 500 brains solving world problems. Mm-hmm. And that's how we see them, not as a deficit that we're trying to fix. Good words. I can absolutely agree with that. And in, in our uh, learning conversations with our students, we really see some amazing, honest conversations. And it gives me hope that these students are going to leave our kiddo with some skills around being able to understand their own thinking and their own, um, well, to use a word, uh, their own dispositional growth, their own journey, and then be able to apply that as they move forward and become really solid humans, really great citizens. Yeah, I think um, I I like the fact that the schools are just going to have to move on. I think um, like <laughs> the, there's so much information and content out there and schools just can't expect them to be like the holder of everything that young people need to know. There's just, uh, you know, the internet is just 
a humongous resource and there's things happening locally as well. There's Ariki Creative and Maui Studios who are creating stuff for our uh, kids to mm-hmm. access that is like beyond what schools can even touch. So it's all there and they're going to have to move on with it. Yeah, I am pretty much the same thing as everyone else has said. I just um, I feel excited for the way that things are going in terms of the experiences that I've had and the connections that I've made, the people that I've worked alongside. I see amazing things happening and I yeah, am really excited for, for the future. But I'm going to apply for as well. Yeah. And what gives me hope are people like yourselves in the room who question So you mentioned about the negative data and we can always see negative data if we're looking for it. But what Mm -hmm. I'm hearing now is people aren't accepting data as such, asking, is this the right way we're measuring? Are we using the right indicators of success? Are we measuring the things that are important to us? And these are the questions that we're having in these conversations around our region, which that gives me hope, is that we're redefining for ourselves and for our schools. And schools are doing it for themselves and finding out how, what is important to us, how are we going to define our success, what each family is going to define. And that's the measure, I think, rather than NCA data or standards. They're helpful, and that's one measure, but it's not the be all and end all. Because if you think of who do you define as successful people in your lives, you never ever think about how they did at high school. Do you? It's about the person and their disposition and their, their wholeness. And I think that's what the conversations like tonight are really, really exciting. Thank you, Michaela. Kia to the panel. Uh, thank you so much for, for all your words. I actually found that really inspirational, particularly the hope that you see in, in, as, as we move ahead. Um, and that was, I was chatting to Di and Janina just before we started this, and we were reflecting on the fact that things have changed for the better in recent times and, and, and we've witnessed that firsthand within Grow White Art and as we look ahead to the next few years thinking about students at the centre of change in a very genuine way mm-hmm. the openness to change from people in the room like this and underpinned with some of those structures that are coming through from the ministry as well mm-hmm. um, yeah just reasons to be comfortable thank you a, a round of applause